What's going on everybody? So in this video, we are going to be covering how to become more confident on your cold calls. Now, before we go ahead and get started, if you are excited for this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let's go ahead and dive in. Now, if you are watching this video right now, chances are you're somebody that probably does cold calling, right? Obviously. And one of the biggest factors of whether or not someone is successful when it comes to cold calling is their ability to be confident in themselves. Now, I can teach you what to say. I can teach you what to do. I can teach you how to close deals, script line by line, script by script. But the reality is that even if I feed you the exact lines, everybody's success rate is going to be different depending on your confidence in yourself. So one thing I really learned in sales quite a long time ago is that to, in order to be successful, number one, you got to be okay with yourself, with who you are as a person. I know that sounds very deep and philosophical and things like that, but in a way it's actually pretty basic. Like when you look in the mirror, are you comfortable with who you see every day? right? Because if you're not, it's going to reflect really heavily on your cold calls, right? And so you got to be okay with yourself. Number two is that you got to be okay with how other people perceive you. So meaning that no matter how the cold call goes, whether it goes well, whether it goes bad, you have to be okay with that. It's okay if people hang up on you, right? And you have to be willing to accept that because it's not like there's anything wrong with you as a person. It's just that maybe that person didn't want to buy at the right time, right? So be okay with yourself, be with okay with how other people perceive you. And that's going to take a long way. How do you become okay with yourself? I mean, that's that's a really deep psychological question that probably be, goes beyond the scope of this video, but generally you gotta be okay with who you are. So now let's go ahead and talk about more confidence skills, right? So for me, when I do any type of cold calling, even when I do sales meetings or public presentations, and maybe I didn't prepare that much, it doesn't really matter to me. I can turn on a video and just talk and not be nervous at all because I'm very confident with my ability. I'm very confident with my skill set, And I know that if I speak, I can just like make the words sound really good. And that really comes to first, it's like practicing. Second is having a strong script and like basically memorizing it inside and out. And then from there, it's just being okay with yourself and just like executing on that. So by like running things down, like over and over and over and over again, it's like, it builds a lot of confidence. And where I actually learned that back in my math class, when I used to take calculus. So when I was in calculus, there's this test called the AP test, right? So it's like a college level test for high school students. And if you do well on it, you get college credit. So when I first took that test, you know, I got a 14% out of hundred percent. So like complete F and then for two months, I just studied a calculus every single day or almost every single day, grind, 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 until I got to the point where I knew every type of question that would be on the test. No matter what they gave me, I've done this test so many times, nothing surprises me anymore. It doesn't even matter if they create a variation of the question, like I've done it before. So when I actually took the test, you know, basically I got a perfect score, a five out of five, and going from an F to basically a perfect score, it's like, quite a big jump in two months. That's actually where I learned that method back when I was like uh, 17, 18. You know, when I got into sales world, I realized it's the same thing. You basically just grind these sales calls over and over and over and over. I know it's repetitive. I know it's scary in the beginning, but when you do it, you just become an expert. You just know what's gonna happen. And then your confidence just skyrockets because a lot of times when we're afraid of something, it's really because we're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of, you know, how is this person gonna respond? What are they gonna say? What if I mess up? What if I miss the call? What if I don't hit my quota? What if, what if, what if? but really nothing even happened yet. You're just afraid of what could happen. And a lot of times the worst possible scenario, the thing that we have in our head that is like, oh my God, I'm so afraid because this thing might happen, they might say no. A lot of the times those things never happen anyways. And so when you practice, 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 eventually you build that confidence because you know what will happen. And then that fear of the unknown just goes away. But if you do not practice, if you do not pick up the phone, if your manager told you you have to make a hundred dollars a day and you're only making seven, you're not gonna get more confident because you're not putting yourself out there. You're not putting yourself in the risk to look stupid. And when you're not doing that, you don't have the opportunity to grow. So a lot of times um, I've learned in my life, like this is just like more general, not just like in cold calling, but the thing that is the most painful and the thing that you are typically the most afraid of, typically that's the thing to do. So it's kind of like pain is a signal or fear is a signal, right? It could go both ways. So like the thing that you really want to do and you know you should do it, but you don't do it because you're afraid of X, Y, and Z, that's the thing that you probably should do. And I know it's scary, but a lot of times when you go through it, you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. And a lot of times the thing that holds people back is that they're just afraid to get started. So if you're a salesperson and you gotta make those cold calls, just make the dials. Whatever the quota is, make a hundred dials and then see what happens. Maybe a hundred people reject you, fine. And the next day, do it again. And maybe one person will say yes. Next time that happens, you learn a little bit more about what works, what doesn't, and then maybe two people will say yes, right? And then you just keep going on and on and on and on. So it's actually very simple, hard to do. 
And that's life in general. Another tip I have for you when it comes to cold calling is that the opening line is probably the most important because you only have a few seconds to capture the imaginations of the customer. And if they don't like you in the first five seconds, they're not gonna have a meeting with you. So here's the tip. The first line you have to master. Whatever it is that it works for your best strategy, you know, whatever line it is, use that, but like master the tonality to control the emotions of the other person when they hear your voice. So for me, I like to say, hey John, how's it going? This is Patrick from Oracle. How you doing today? Something like that. And you might be saying like, oh, Patrick, that doesn't work because nobody likes it when you say, how's it going today? That sounds so fake. But not really, because when I say it, it sounds pretty real. So I've done it a million times. I already know it works. So like anybody that says it doesn't work, it's not true because factually I've done it so many times and it has worked. It may not work for you because you haven't practiced it and you haven't practiced your tonality, but it definitely works for me and it works for a lot of other people that I've trained. But if your style is to say something else like, did I catch you at a bad time? Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, but it works for some people, right? Everyone has their own different style. I'm not saying what's better or worse. It's just what works for your style. After you pick what that first line is gonna be, usually it's gonna be the same thing. Like you say the same line over and over, like, hey, John, I'm a little lost. You might have to take a second to tell you I'm calling. Right, that's another one I use. Once you get that down, basically you wanna record yourself and you wanna practice, 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 practice. You get better and better and better. You control your tonality, you control the voice of how you sound and uh, it just sounds so much better. From there, what you also do is, depending on some the company you work at, you might also record your calls, right? So if you record your calls and you look back on it and you listen, you kind of pick apart like, okay, like I'm saying the same line, but I'm saying it kind of weird and I think that's why people don't like me. And on the phone, typically, you know, studies have shown that 70% of the reason for, you know, why people like you when they talk to you on a cold call is your tonality, not the words you actually say. So that's why the words actually are not that important. It's how you say them, right? So if I said, hey, John, did I catch you at a bad time? Or something like that, or like, hey, John, um, did, did I catch you at that time? It sounds kind of weird, but like people aren't gonna take you that seriously depending on how you sound. But if I said, uh, hey John, did I catch you at a bad time? Right, it's a lot more natural. It's a lot more, you know, human and it, you build a connection. It's a lot easier, right? So you have to control the way you sound. And the tip I have for you for sounds is that your voice is an instrument. You can sound however you want to sound as long as it's in your range. Okay, so like for me in university, I felt like the octave of my voice was higher. So it didn't sound as like manly, you know? And then I just thought about one day and I was like, well, I would like to sound cool. So let me go ahead and change that a little bit. Now, am I pretending to have a fake voice? No, this is my regular voice. But I learned how to just use a different part of it, similar to how you would use an instrument, right? It's just like a different octave. And the thing is you can control it. You can, uh, if you're talking too high, then you can make it lower. If you're talking too low like this, and it's very hard for people to understand you and you sound scary, then you can pick it up a little bit, right? I'm not saying to sound fake. I'm not saying to like pretend to be something you're not. I'm just saying that the voice is an instrument that has a wide range of different sounds you can make, right? Even the word, the way I said wide range, right? It's like, you can say it differently. It's literally an instrument. So control the way you speak. It just makes people feel so much different when, you, when you're talking, right? And so that's a very, very valuable tip because a lot of times people think that, oh, this is just the way I sound. Well, it's kind of the way you sound, but have you ever tried working on it, right? And it's not easy. It takes time. It takes recording. It takes effort. And a lot of people, you know, the reason they don't do it is because they don't like to hear themselves on the phone because they're like, oh my God, I sound terrible. I can't listen to this. And that's exactly how I felt when I first listened to myself in a recording. Uh, but over time, you practice, you get better, and then you develop your sound. And then next thing you know, you're like a cold calling pro. So that's a very valuable tip I have for you guys if you're trying to get better at cold calling. Now, the final tip I have for you guys is once you master these cold calling tips, you know, you can actually use these skills in the real world, right? So like for me, for example, you know, recently I've been doing a lot of AMAs, doing a lot of public speaking on Twitter spaces and like on Discord and things like that. And that, that's everything going on with my other business and like NFT world, not the sales world. I've learned that because I practice so much in sales and I have those communication skills, they directly apply to basically any industry, right? So in any industry, having the ability to communicate is going to be an extreme advantage. So when I speak in front of an audience of like a few hundred people and they're listening to like NFT stuff and I'm giving my advice or giving my opinion on things like the market and stuff, right? I know that certain ways I say things, certain like sales techniques that I use in cold calling and, and doing meetings and, and like understanding pain, solving pains and all those things I teach you guys on my channel here. I basically use that in these other industries. And what happens is that people are like, oh my God, Patrick sounds like good. He sounds like, you know, the Messiah or I don't know, whatever, right? And it's because like I practice these sales skills and I'm just applying it in a space where not many people have those sales skills, right? I feel like the main benefit, I feel like when you do sales is that you learn the skill or you acquire it and then you can take it with you wherever 
you go, whether you start your own business, you work at another company, you decide to go in a different direction in your career. Maybe you want to be a marketer, right? But then in every type of job, there's some kind of human communication. For me personally, I'm very fortunate that sales was the first thing I did out of college because those skill sets basically carried me throughout my entire career. Without those skill sets, I wouldn't be able to do any of the things I do today. But because I learned those skills, it just helped me out so much. So my advice to you guys is that if you're in sales, you don't have to do sales forever, but just understand that during this time when you are a salesperson and you actually want to do this and spend some time, make some money doing it, make sure you acquire the skills that are transferable to anything you do in the future. That is the biggest thing because if you hate sales, understand you don't have to do it forever because you can take those skills and put it somewhere else. And if you love sales, understand you also still don't have to do it forever because you don't always have to be the salesperson. You could be the entrepreneur, for example. You could be the sales manager, the sales director, but you got to have those skills first. So that said, that's everything that we have to cover for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one.